What's happening guys, it's Shane here. And today we're gonna to be talking about the majors with the highest dropout rate. So these are majors where people go into them and for whatever reason, they end up dropping out a significant amount of the time. Now this can be for several different reasons and I'm gonna discuss my opinion on what the reasons are with each of these majors. Sometimes it's because they're really difficult. Sometimes it's because the expectation doesn't match up with the reality. And sometimes there are other random reasons. But if you see your major on this list, it might make you think twice about going into that major or just make you do a little bit more due diligence if you do decide to go into it. So that being said, if you appreciate this type of video, go ahead, gently tap that like button. We'll aim for a thousand likes on this video and let's jump right into it. All right, so number 10 on the list is going to be biological sciences at 6.8%. Now, the people who made this list actually grouped together like several different degrees when they were doing this. But basically, in my opinion, a lot of the time when people go into biological sciences, they do it because they want to work in a lab. And I think one of the big reasons why so many people go into this and they end up dropping out is because of the fact that they think that working in a lab is going to be a certain way. So they watch movies, they watch TV, and they think you're going to be, you know, doing all these awesome experiences experiments and like discovering all this new stuff when in reality working in a lab a lot of it is incredibly boring incredibly tedious and you're doing the same things over and over again and this is especially true at the entry level positions. so later on down the line you can do some of the more exciting stuff but at the entry level positions especially when you're interning or going to school working in a lab can be very boring now I do think that's one of the biggest reasons why you see the high dropout right here but on top of this biology is actually a very difficult subject it's not easy Easy at all. I'd say that biology is probably in the top 20 or 30 hardest majors. So it's a lot harder than people think it's going to be. And this is why I've always said it's very important that if you're going to go to college, make sure you have a good idea of what career you're going for and make sure that your college degree is going to help you to actually get to that career. And also make sure you do your due diligence on the career itself. So for instance, if you want to work in a lab, go and shadow somebody who works in a lab. Go and talk to people who work in labs. You're going to have a much better idea of what your life is going to be like on a day-to-day -day basis if you do that. And by the way, if you still haven't decided what your career is, I did make a free six-step guide to choosing your dream career. Uh, that is going to be available down in the description as well as the pinned comment. It's totally free and you'll also get access to my newsletter as well. So definitely check that out. It's helped a ton of people. Thousands and thousands of people have been signing up and I've been getting incredible reviews from it. All right, number nine on the list is going to be architecture at 6.9% dropout rate. Now, in my opinion, the main reason why a lot of people drop out with this one is actually the difficulty. Architecture is a very difficult degree and it's uniquely hard because of the fact that you actually have to be pretty good at right brain and left brain type thinking. So when you get an architecture degree, not only do you have to be good at like the mathematical kind of logical side of things, but there's also a lot of creative side to it as well. A lot of degrees out there are gonna be more focused on the creative side and then a lot of them are more focused on the logical side, but architecture, actually, you have to be pretty good at both. This is probably one of the big reasons why you see architecture having the highest amount of hours spent studying every single week. That's right, architecture majors study more than any other type of student that goes to college. So I think the rigor here is the main reason why architecture has such a high dropout rate. A secondary reason is the expectation is probably a little bit different than the reality. Like people don't realize it's, it's very difficult and you're gonna have to spend a lot of time on it. And then a third reason is getting a job as an architect isn't the easiest thing in the world. Uh, once you do get a job, you get some experience, it can be really good, but it's not very easy. And when people find that out, they probably tend to drop out. Number eight on the list is gonna be engineering and technology at 7%. So they basically bunch together a lot of different engineering and technology degrees here. And I think it's pretty obvious why this one has such a high dropout rate. It's because engineering degrees are incredibly difficult, right? So people have trouble graduating with an engineering degree in four years. Like four years graduating with an engineering degree is difficult. A lot of the time people will do it in five years or even six. So doing an engineering degree is incredibly rigorous. So I'm not surprised to see that one on here. Um, I always try to warn people like, listen, difficulty is very subjective, but you really can't argue like engineering degrees are objectively much more difficult than the average degree in college. I lived in a scholarship hall with like 50 different people and some of these people were like the smartest person in their high school, right? Then they go to college, they do an engineering degree and they are struggling. They are having a lot of difficulty 
getting through the curriculum. Now, that doesn't mean if you're not the smartest person in your high school, you shouldn't get an engineering degree. I'm not saying that at all. Just know what you're getting yourself into. It's not going to be easy. Number seven on the list is going to be agriculture and related subjects. Now, in my opinion, again, this is just my two cents, my own opinion. Maybe you think I'm wrong about this. The big reason why this one has a 7% dropout rate is because of the fact that people aren't able to get jobs very easily with this degree. And when they find that out, when they find out that they're not able to get jobs very easily, maybe they're gonna have to get a master's degree or something like that in order to be even considered for a job. That turns a lot of people off. Number six on the list is going to be combined subjects. So this could be any number of different things. Like I've talked before on this channel about like combined degrees where it's like, you you basically design your own degree. It's like a Build-A-Bear workshop of degrees. And I've talked about how that's just a terrible idea most of the time. Please do not do that. I've also talked on this channel about how double majoring usually isn't going to be the best choice. There are some exceptions. Like if you're really set on getting an art degree, for instance, maybe it might make sense to double major in something else that's gonna help you be more employable. But typically double majoring is not the best idea. And same thing goes with dual majoring overall. Companies do not wanna hire you to be a generalist. And if you are like, you know, getting all these different majors and stuff like that, it shows that you're a generalist. They want to hire somebody who is a specialist in the specific position with those specific skills that they are looking for. So this is why combined subjects has a 7.2% dropout rate. When people realize that it's not going to help them out, and it's probably a lot more difficult than just getting a single degree, they tend to drop out or, you know, switch to another major, something along those lines. Number five on the list is going to be subjects allied to medicine. And this one has a 7.5% dropout rate. Now, my opinion on this is two things. First of all, uh, medical degrees are somewhat difficult. They're not easy, right? Now, nurses will tell you, oh my God, my nursing degree was the hardest thing in the world. It, it's not, okay? It's definitely not. It's not as hard as like engineering, uh, pre-med or anything like that. However, it is pretty difficult, right? It's not easy at all. There's gonna be a ton of memorization, a lot of busy work you're gonna be studying all the time. And then I think the second reason why this one has such a high dropout rate is because people don't realize what they're getting themselves into when they go into the medical field. When you go into the medical field, typically speaking, you are going to be busy all the time. When you are working in a hospital, it can be incredibly intense and you, know, you are taking care of people's lives. That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself and then not only are you taking care of their lives but you have to do it very quickly there are certain types of personalities that do really well in the medical field I loved it for instance um, I kind of like doing work that keeps me busy but there's certain people that don't have very high stress tolerances so when they start going on rotations or they start working they can get stressed out incredibly fast so I highly highly recommend that if you want to go into the medical field go and shadow somebody. It's super easy to find people to shadow in the medical field. It's not difficult at all. Go and shadow them, see what their life is like on a day-to-day -day basis and see if that is something that you want to do. Number four on the list is gonna be creative arts and design at 7.6% dropout rate. So not surprised to see this one on the list at all. I think a lot of people will go into this thinking, oh, I'm gonna learn so much about art. Uh, they go into classes, a lot of their creativity gets stifled, and on top of that, they find out that their art degree is not gonna help them get a job, not even a little bit. And in my experience, consulting with people, doing thousands of hours of research on this, Art degrees are not worth it probably 99% of the time. There are very rare cases where it actually does make sense for somebody to get an art degree, but the vast majority of the time you shouldn't do it. Number three on the list at 7.6% is going to be mass communications and documentation. So this is basically a communications degree. Now this one has a 7.6% dropout rate and communications degrees are known for being very easy. So it's definitely not the rigor of the major that is causing people to drop out. I think one of the main reasons reasons why they're dropping out is because they find out that getting this degree is not going to help them get a job in many cases. Number two on the list is going to be business and administrative studies. And again, they kind of group together like all different business degrees here. And this one had an 8.6% dropout rate. And I think the main reason for this one that it has such a high dropout rate is the reality and the expectations are very different. People expect when they go into a business degree that they're going to be, you know, working on a bunch of entrepreneurs stuff and they're gonna be learning how to start a business and all this sort of thing when in reality what they're teaching you is more corporate focused and a lot of it can be incredibly boring 
And in my opinion, the only way that you can learn how to start a business is to actually start a business, right? Starting a business is like riding a bike. You can take online courses on how to ride a bike. You can read all the books in the world about riding a bike. You could even hire like a world-renowned bicycle expert like Lance Armstrong uh, to teach you how to ride a bike. But until you actually jump on the bike and start riding it, you're not really gonna know how to do it. And business is the same way. In order to learn how to do business, you simply just have to start a business and try to do it. So if you're somebody who wants to become an entrepreneur, keep that in mind, very important. I probably just saved you like two or three years of your life. Number one on the list is going to be computer science. Again? Not again. Yes, computer science is number one yet again. 9.2% drop out of computer science. And this is for several different reasons. The first reason is computer science is a very rigorous degree. A lot of people in my experience that are attracted to computer science want to get into it because they think that, oh, it's like a super easy, cushy job where you're gonna get paid a lot. And in some cases, that is true. But the problem is, is you have to learn the skills first. And the process of learning the skills is not going to be easy. Computer science is probably in the top 10 or 15 hardest degrees. And then the second big reason why computer science is on this list at 9.2% is because of the fact that there are other alternatives to get into those career paths than getting a computer science degree that are viable. So getting a computer science degree is still a good investment. I wanna make this 100% clear, because uh, sometimes people will comment down below, they get really confused when I say things like this. Getting a computer science degree is still a good investment overall. With that being said, there are other viable alternatives to getting a computer science degree. For instance, you can go to boot camps. I just saw a really cool post on LinkedIn from this one guy who hires people from boot camps. I'll have that pop up on the screen. You can pause it if you'd like. He basically talks about how he has a really good experience hiring people who go through boot camps versus hiring people who get a computer science degree. And he talks about the reasons why that is. And a lot of those reasons are valid. You can also go the self-teaching route. Now, this is pretty rare. I think less than 5% of people have success doing the self-teaching route, but if you're somebody who's really good at teaching yourself, you're an autodidact, this can be a good option as well. So it's not that getting a computer science degree is bad, it's just that there are other alternatives and people probably figure that out a few years in when they're getting their computer science degree and they switch to those other things. On top of this, if you're somebody who is self-taught and then you go and get a computer science degree, I've actually seen this happen several times where companies will hire you in the middle of getting your degree. And then of course, you're gonna drop out. This happened to somebody I knew in college who was self-taught since he was a teenager and he was about two years into getting his computer science degree and he actually managed to get an offer from Google right out of school. So of course he dropped out. So the dropout rate here is 9.2% and that might look really scary. Oh my gosh, Shane, this is a terrible degree you have to realize that there are other factors that go into these dropout rates that you might not have considered. Check out this video right here. I made it just for you and I think you'll enjoy it if you enjoyed this video. Also, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And I will see you next time.